rest on that hill, a ridge right in this direction. Looking down here, so right out here is that level plane that we just saw. We just drove the bus right past it, you saw, right? Yeah. So this is the Valley of Ela. In fact, if you want to come up after this and see how clearly you can see it, Robin and I are looking yeah. clearly out over the Valley of Ela and the hill of Soko, where you just went to the biblical gas station, <laughs> is right there. And then the Ridge of Enemies runs all the way along up to Azekah. Up here, at this edge, this is really like the forward edge of the military force, because yep. the, the arc goes back in this direction. The arc's back along this hill, and the river wadi that you're in right now, it follows this whole line. See that sandstone cliff right there? So this, that line, that's probably not sandstone, whatever that is, this, this wadi widens out, as it goes down there and follows all along this ridge. So, as I said before, there's an, there's an encampment up at the top. Still, it's called Kirbit Kaifa, that's an archaeological site. But imagine you come out and the king brings you out to the edge of your forward operating area and you're looking out over all these Philistines and out here would be a perfect place for Goliath to stand and make a challenge because you could hear him up on the hill. He could stand right here and call out his challenge. And this young shepherd boy comes down this hill right here. Comes down this hill into this river wadi you're standing in and picks up stones before coming out and entering eyes of thousands of people trusting Yahweh to be his hand. Yeah. Okay, what I was, remember what I was saying up on the hill. Man. This is, there's a reason they're on this hill. You're not taking a horse up that, up that wall. You're not taking a chariot up onto this hill anywhere and expecting it to work. Anybody seen uh, Gladiator, the movie? Surely more than one of you. There we go. Several of you have seen Gladiator, the movie. Do you remember the scene with the chariots? What happens to people if a chariot catches up with you? Very ugly bad things. That's right? essentially the uh, the first idea of mechanized infantry. So the Israelites want to stay away from the strengths of the mechanized infantry and stick with their lights. So the lights can run up and down hills. They can do all kinds of cool stuff as long as you're on a slope. And uh, But to do that, they have to use lightweight weapons like slings. This is a sling that is typical of the materials used in the period. Leather pouch, uh, jute strings, and that sort of thing. Um, and those of you around you, I'm looking for a rock about the size of a golf ball. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's a little big, but we can do it. Yeah. This is nice. That's a little small. This is a little big. Although they have yeah, known to they're throw they're ones this too. large, yes. A little small, but yeah. But we're getting there. This is a oh, good one. Right here. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah, these are good. You got a good one? Yep. These, okay. This is about the size of a Perfect. Okay. Um, the, the, the stone is used for an obvious reason because they're laying all over the place. If you were intentionally going to gather stones, you'd be you'd be basically looking at them for the same basic size and weight. Uh, for example, if you're shooting archery, they make a big deal out of having the arrows be exactly the same because they don't go as far. They go different distances with the same amount of effort. The Romans were, were made sling bullets. And the first bullets were actually sling bullets. And they were a lead blob that looked kind of like an, a, an orange slice that weighed about two ounces. Hmm. So if you can imagine like a two ounce banana fishing sinker, like you take salmon fishing or something, and then wrap that up in a string and throw it as hard as you can throw it, that sucker is going to hurt mm -hmm. when it gets there. I did a little bit of looking around for speed, uh, for speeds and weights and all that kind of stuff. Um, there's a Palestinian kid, I think it is, that's doing some YouTube videos about this sort of stuff. He throws a three ounce, a roughly three ounce rock at a little over 50 meters a second. <laughs> it works out to 105 miles an hour. So as you can imagine, the three ounce rock to the head at 105 miles an hour is going to hurt. Oh, yeah. um, the, in my exploration, I'm not a big sling expert, so I took myself to the local driving range <laughs> for my I can throw a golf ball maybe 20 yards. I'm not a particularly athletic guy. I'm certainly not, you know, a National League pitcher by any means. So I can I can lob a rock maybe 20 yards. I can sling a yard. After about an hour, 
I was able to sling a golf ball 75 bucks. Yeah. It, lo it looked like I was hitting it with pitching. Uh, like a full, you know, those of you that golf know what it looks like when you hit a ball with a full, with a full stroke on a pitching wedge and you get that big, boom, big high arc. That's what I was getting out of that. And I was trying to range in on the 75 yard marker like that. I certainly cannot throw a rock 75 yards. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So the wounding lethality of something like this is a little hard to calculate because it doesn't quite fit the numbers with everything. Like bullet math doesn't work the same way as arrow math, which doesn't quite work the same way as missile math. So it's a little tough. To, there's, you're looking more at momentum. So the, the amount of energy involved is kind of like a 22 long rifle cartridge for those of you that know guns. Interesting. Uh, so it's not a tremendous amount of energy, but it is a very high amount of momentum. So it's, it's difficult to gauge the math. Uh, the main thing to know is that they were used by armies all over the world. Uh, the most famous slingers were from Spain, from the Balearic region of Spain, and to this day they have slinging competitions in Spain. Uh, they tend to use a larger rock about the size of a baseball. And they, those mm -hmm. slingers would sling, um, they would learn to sling since they were small boys and could hit small targets at distance with their sling. The Romans, as I said earlier, tended to use them. If they had a chance to think about it, they would make lead sling bullets. And they would often make a lead sling bullet with a small hole in it. So when you slung it, it would whistle. A normal sling, when you throw it, it doesn't make any noise. So it's long stories about, about the uh, psychological effect of having m missiles raining in on you. Yeah. Having missiles that make noise that rain in on you is a lot more terrifying than missiles that don't. So they would go all out. I'm going to take these and had a little hole drilled and put into them in order so when they threw them they could they could uh, they would make a lot of noise. Similarly that shape lays really well in the pouch that he's got back there. Uh, but when you put a round object in there it wants to roll out. So if they put that that orange peel shape thing in there, um, you could put one in there and it would stay really good or you could even put two or three of them in there if you needed for some reason. So if you wanted a kind of a shotgun effect out of it you could put two or, or two easily into a sling and throw that and get them to rain in. The normal technique for slinging is is this way, comes around your head and then, and then around, out. That's kind of the Afghan sidearm version. The Valierics are more like, more in this area. I'm just gonna go straight in a line <laughs> because I don't wanna accidentally let go at the wrong time and, you know. And we also say thank you, Robin. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. What were you doing? Well, we were doing a game <laughs> That was bad. So I'm, I'm going to go chuck one of these. Like this. Get your cameras ready. You're about to see a man sling a rock in the wadi in the valley of Ela. That's pretty cool, huh? He's going to be right up on the head. He's going to throw it like this so we see, can see. We are not going to die. Robin may die, but you are not going to die. Hopefully it will all go well. Again, I am very green at this. I just kind of researched it in order to come give this talk. It turns out there's another tourist group coming over the field. Whoa! Yo! I didn't see it. Yeah, that seriously took off. It seriously took off. Yeah. yeah. Hit it, hit it for that tree over there. No, it's too close to us. No, it's not that close. Yeah, you can, you can, you can probably right, hit that tree. All right, here we go. See if we can go watch it this way. Sky, it was nice it. knowing you. No, it's it's sick. Thanks. It's in a line. Great. Here it goes. Well, there it goes minimum. Wow! Yeah. Yeah, they go a lot yeah. 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 So great, so take a moment, don't go too far, because this goes a long ways. Notice that there has recently been water in here, look at all the green sprouts yeah. and the thistle. So this has water in it, right now is a great time to find a rock and make a memory. Mm -hmm. Oh, maybe not even. Not out of eyesight, a good spot, like not past that tree, okay? Um, sure, yeah, grab one for a friend. Um, 
Wondering what kind of rock to get? Come talk to Robin. The idea they would look for smooth, rounded stones like you find in a in a in an active river that were nice and smooth and all that. Yeah, we'll tell that story. Yeah. Um, but they didn't necessarily need them to be round. You know, that, which I thought was interesting. When they made an actual sling bullet, they made it look like an orange. Because round can be hard. 